Hello, everyone. Uh, my name is Liang Yan. I'm here to give you a session about uh, Enable WGPU in Firecracker. And uh, I'm uh, really excited to do this presentation here. Uh, enjoy. So before we start, I'll just give you some uh, introduction about myself. So I'm a virtualization engineer uh, from SUSE. So my working area is mainly focused on the IO virtualization, you know, GPU, and the network before. And the architecture are mostly focused on ARM64 and S390, uh, the non-X86 architecture. And uh, also, as you know, SUSE dropped OpenStack Cloud last year and uh, purchased uh, uh, Rancher this year. So we had some transition. Uh, I started working on the Firecrack here, and uh, I like this stuff. And uh, also, I work at home for four years now, I think. I know most of you are also working at home because of the coronavirus pandemic. I hope you can enjoy your work at home timing. And uh, I live in Louisville, Kentucky, United States. So usually people don't know it. I just uh, see this is the hometown of Abraham Lincoln. People still don't know it. Then uh, Muhammad Ali, maybe. Still, then I said, uh, just uh, Kentucky Friday Chicken, KFC. Now they, they know it. So sounds like people are enjoy food better than sports, better than politics. Anyway, this is just a joke. So let's back into today's topic. So for today, I'm going to give you a quick background of, about the micro VM backtrack here, and also give you some uh, uh, introduction about uh, GPU virtualization, especially some uh, latest uh, update, uh, and uh, also the motivation. Why do we want to do it? And uh, how do we do it? What should uh, we do? Uh, since this is a journey, uh, exploration journey, so I'll share some thoughts after that. So at last would be the QA part, but uh, you can type in your question from our platform the chat platform, so I would be glad to, to answer. So let's have a check, uh, quick look on the micro VM here. Uh, I think it's not a, a strength for you guys. And uh, for me, I also followed this topic uh, for a couple of years. There's a, a lot of uh, a couple options here, like uh, QMU, Lite, Q, QMU Lead, NEMU or QEMU Micro VM last year from last year. This is QEMU based and uh, Firecracker, um, Rust VMM based, um, but it's earlier than Rust VMM. Anyway, and also some other like uh, process level, the API, um, like a GWISE here. It's, um, so it's not my intention here. So we just uh, keep it. Uh, if you look at those, uh, VMs here, you, you may see something in common, like uh, we are not, they are not considered as a VM, but more like a container. And uh, they also work as a container. There's only like one, maybe one workload under it and a very short life cycle. And uh, just need uh, it, uh, it's safe and the architecture is light, the running is fast. Here's a uh, architecture for Firecracker. Uh, you could see it's highly integrated with container here. And uh, that's, I think that's the many uses for them too, for the micro VM. And uh, we'll take a quick look to the GPU side. So I think a GPU, everyone using GPU today. Mm. But uh, looking at the GPU, you, you may see there's uh, too many uses for it. Uh, graphic and uh, computing. Graphic like the game streaming, 3D rendering. And uh, uh, computing is more like uh, popular today because of the AI machine learning. And uh, you know that there's two different types for this kind of machine learning, the training, uh, train a model based on 
the huge data set and the inference. Like uh, you already have this trend uh, model, just uh, do some uh, uh, judgment. So, and uh, then the GPU virtualization. And uh, I think a lot of uh, people already done this topic uh, from a low level. And uh, we we couldn't know that like uh, you can see pass through, GPU pass through, that's a basic one. And uh, there is also a full GPU virtualization and uh, there's a software way to do it, MDV, mediated device, Intel and Nvidia doing it. There's a hard way like SRRO way and the AMD did it, but uh, Nvidia is also jumped to it too. And the uh, ARM, ARM also, so you can see here. This is the 800 just announced this May. And uh, uh, you can see there, are the, this called multi-instance GPU actually are SRIOV based. And uh, one interesting part is that uh, it could also be used for a CUDA application directly. So, and the uh, user case is like, uh, you can use it uh, in a container. So looks like all about container today. And uh, um, ARM is pretty new and uh, they just announced its GPU virtualization solution uh, last month, I think. And the uh, interesting part is uh, its user case. They are mostly working using, used for vehicle autonomous driving and uh, basically for this uh, uh, automotive enhancement. And uh, this is a new user case uh, besides the training and inference scenario there. And uh, it's kind of interesting make things. Anyway, so so they also have, and uh, based on the <coughs> architecture here, it, it, it also looks like hardware based. And uh, yeah, there's also other GPU I've been working very closely with all those vendors in SUSE, uh, like the uh, NVIDIA ARM and also AMD Intel and uh, and even some other hardware accelerator like uh, FPGA and uh, neuron NPU, like a uh, TPU, some stuff there. So, but uh, we are talking about the GPU here. So let's just focus on here. And uh, now comes to the motivation. Why do we want to do it? Like, uh, I guess generally because people want it, it's quite popular for AI and machine learning today. And uh, some people just want more for from Firecracker. Like, uh, yes, you are wonderful, but why don't you provide this more? Uh, the other side is about the GPU virtualization. Like uh, we could see that, uh, IO virtualization is actually become the powerful, more powerful now. And uh, it has its own virtualization capability and uh, which is independent with the general VMM. And like uh, we just saw the 800 there, like uh, they, you could just use its uh, vGPU for application. So that's a good case. And uh, also people are, Talking about it in uh, in Firecracker, the GitHub is here, like a couple of here, and uh, generally people want it, but uh, there's some uh, conflict here, like uh, uh, because Firecracker has its specific purpose, mainly for the serverless computing, and uh, so in this case they may need to run tons of workloads in a host. In that case, they want the over subscription and uh, also they want a better performance during the workload suites. And uh, VGPU GPU utilization may seem not good. But uh, anyway, I'll still show you how to do it here. Uh, like I said, I just uh, knew to Firecrack and uh, Rust VMM stuff, but uh, I know mm, VGPU and also QEMU. Uh, good part is that uh, uh, most of its work is still reused. 
like uh, the host side MDV or SROA, and uh, is created uh, for the VGPU, and uh, we share this. And uh, the KVM side, by correct, is still using KVM for, for it. So those far, we, we don't need to care about. And uh, we only care about the VMM, the part, like uh, if we're using the VFI or PTI pass through, basically VMM just needed to create a PTI device based on the host information by like uh, accessed by VFIO function here. And uh, the other part is that uh, uh, cloud hypervisor, this is a project based on RAT VMM, uh, they it uh, implemented uh, VFIO bending and the VFIO IO CTLs. I think that's uh, that that makes the whole process much easier, doable. Uh, from here, the VFIO bounding is kind of some head fires automatically generated by the binder gen. And uh, you can see there's just some head fires for the function definition. Uh, from the KVM or host side. And the VFIO IOCTLs is the mainly implementation. So now things get clearly and uh, easier. So what I did here, uh, as I said earlier, I'm working on the GPU virtualization. So I have uh, a lot of fancy hardware here, the vGPU, V100, NVIDIA V100, uh, Intel GPU, and I also have this uh, old uh, AMD GPU here. And uh, I'm working on, based on the uh, 315 SP2 OS here, and uh, uh, also running uh, the VMM. So I, I, from my thought, I think I just, I needed to run through with the cloud hypervisor. That would make things easier. Like. Uh, if it could work, and uh, if not, what's the problem? After that, I can just uh, backport or um, refactor to the fire tracker. So things are pretty clear. And uh, during my try on cloud hypervisor, I found uh, most of them could work, only like a Wii GPU. It's like once I parsed uh, the MDV inside, uh, it uh, couldn't it, it uh, couldn't get through. So looks something wrong with the GPU driver during my debugging. But uh, uh, I'll, I'll follow that later. But uh, anyway, I I mainly use the Intel with GPU here because um, it's open source from either side. And uh, now back to all these like I checked. Uh, uh, how cloud hypervisor make it work. And uh, in order to that, I need uh, this kind of a crease here, the VFIO bonding and the VFIO IOCTLs. This is the two main uh, creates here for, for implementation. And also need a PCI. Uh, as you know, FireCracker only has this MMIO bus. So we needed to implement this uh, PCI bus there, and then just uh, some VMM, like uh, uh, we needed to follow the whole process and then implement it in Firecracker. And also need some dependencies like the VM device, device manager and the VM locker and the, the, the full PCI implementation. I probably moved a much more codes here because I just uh, the as the first step, I just make it work. Then I can get through all the code carefully. And uh, also there's some other things like because of the GPU, uh, the specific of the GPU, we need some of the UEFI for some of the both, both, uh, we both set up. Otherwise uh, it will have the uh, driver issue later. And also the kernel configuration, the ori original configuration is quite simple. And uh, but uh, we needed to enable extra uh, modules for just to, to enable the graphic driver. So, and uh, yeah, I 
I plan to put all the code here, but uh, well, that's uh, really not necessary. And uh, if you do that, you may see uh, another benefit for the Rust is like uh, the whole device cr create, it's much easier than the Q QOM model back in QEMU. So what I'm doing here is like uh, during in the firecracker, I uh, press the parameters here. I just uh, catch this uh, device comes with uh, mm, the, the path of the device. Like the, if you use the MDV, it will come the uh, UUID number. And also if just the virtual function, it would be uh, just the uh, PCI numbers there. And uh, then during the VM uh, initialization, I needed to create this PCI bus. And then uh, I needed to do, I needed to use the VFIO to create a PCI devices. So I needed to access the host device with the device path or ID, you can see. And then it will access to the host uh, sys file system and uh, get the grub and the device information from host. And then you just uh, use this information to create uh, your VFI uh, PCI device. And after that, you put it to the uh, PCI bus. And uh, after that, I think uh, um, it will be detected by the guest VM. So, so far, uh, even I said, I, I think I put a more, much more code here, but uh, it could work with some basic functions and it could be detect detected by the guest kernel. Although just uh, during the, the kernel, uh, the driver couldn't uh, work very well. There's a, a lot of issues like here, the bus table is not available. Can't find uh, this one and uh, some a lot of uh, DRM function failures there. The, uh, the math is, is kind of a mess. Uh -huh. Mm, I'll need to go through that uh, anyway. So anyway, like I said, this is a journal uh, explore. So uh, let me just share some thoughts during here. Like uh, uh, during all the back part uh, working, I think it, it's fine. I, I like to read in code. So, but I just uh, feel like uh, during all the working, I'm just one question I'm keep asking, is it a good fit? Because uh, first, uh, the more I backport, the more it uh, it needs. Like uh, I needed to backport this, that. And uh, even after after that, I the, the firecracker looks quite uh, different. The booting time and the memory uh, foot um, print, it's quite, it's bigger and uh, I must have done something wrong. Also, like uh, the during the discussion there, so the, the issues there is still exists, like uh, the design philosophy of authorities computing, like uh, since there will be uh, a lot of uh, workload here. And uh, so they want this, uh, over subscription, and they also want uh, the Swift. Uh, the Swiss would be uh, fast and uh, uh, efficient. However, the the WGPU scheduler probably would be a concern. Mm. Um, I didn't test that because I just uh, test the one VM here. The workload is uh, simple, so. So with this confusion, I'm just asking, is it a good fit? And uh, so I just uh, step back, like what do we want in the first place? So like uh, FireCorrect is for the serverless computing for sure. And uh, we don't want a graphic, which we just want a computing. Even for the computing, we don't want the training because it will last long. We, just thinking about the inference. So we still want it safe, light, and fast. So we 
check back to this working load, like uh, the platform here. Basically, they are just CUDA or OpenCL mainly, like uh, even for the ARM, the ARM NA, it has its own uh, platform, but uh, eventually it will still use the OpenCL driver for GPU side. So maybe things would be easier thinking in another way, like uh, maybe we create a word CUDA here or word OpenCL, no matter what. So we can create it as the word MMO device and uh, it's only for the general compute and uh, the design could be based on the driver API and then use the way ring to transparent to the host side. And uh, so we don't have those concerns anymore, like the memory ping and uh, the huge uh, uh, complicated uh, uh, machine configuration and uh, the kernel configuration. So maybe, so I think uh, I'll probably work on it. There's uh, already started the initial work here. Another way is, uh, it uh, encourages me is that uh, about uh, the 800 MIG, the, that it could be used directly by uh, container. So I, I did some research back there and uh, I thought maybe I can reuse some idea about the Libre NVIDIA container, but uh, no, it, Libre NVIDIA container is like a mount the host driver into the container image, the container root file system. So it's it's different with a uh, virtual machine scenario. But uh, maybe still thinking about another uh, device type or like uh, VFIO, <laughs> MIO, no, I don't know. But uh, yeah, I'll keep thinking. So for this whole journey, I'm thinking like uh, some question like, uh, could we do it? Sure, but should we? That depends. Like uh, here, like uh, we GPU in Firecracker, like, then it, it may be a very good fit, like uh, because it's a specific uh, user case for um, Firecracker. But if we jump out of this scenario, Thinking about the ARM, the uh, autonomous driving there, that's a different scenario. Like uh, maybe we, the workload maybe not that heavy, but uh, we still want uh, some uh, 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 GPU computing here. So, and uh, still we still want it uh, like a safe light first. So this may be a good match. So yeah, so that's totally depend on how you want to use it. So thank you for this one. I will still implement it eventually, even not for Firecracker, maybe uh, design a new uh, VMM based on the Rust VMM, like just for some uh, vGPU scenario or AI machine learning scenario. That would be fun. But I uh, really needed to optimize the code carefully. Uh, or just that uh, we discussed earlier, just to use a different device model. I think it's doable. I I also did some research here, some people, some, some paper from school already implemented it uh, with a different way. But here we just needed to do it with Rust and the KVM. Uh, one thing is uh, I think the, the API, API dependency would be need to be really careful. We don't want this kind of a API here. And uh, I think uh, if uh, it has both ways and then we do a uh, overall comparison would be interesting. I think maybe next year I'll share some uh, update with uh, even with upstream. And uh, the last thing is that uh, yeah, I, I think I, I like the Rust uh, VMM Firecracker very much. Like, uh, especially for created device, it's much easier than Q, QOM, if you know what I mean. And uh, I think uh, that's it. So if you have questions, 
and uh, typing uh, from the chat channel and, uh, or email me. So anyway, thank you so much for your time. And uh, it's uh, really exciting. It's my honor to present here. Um, thanks. <laughs>